overwhelming for me as I, uh, I attended my first far Positive Farmers Conference five years ago and uh, I can remember thinking that uh, one day I'd love to be up there talking in front of you all but uh, it's a little overwhelming as it's, as it's happened a bit sooner than expected. I thought I'd be about my mid-sixties at that time so <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I'm here today to talk you through mine and Mary's story and uh, unfortunately she's unable to be here today as she gave birth to our third child just three weeks ago. Um, myself and Mary met in North Wales and we've been together for 12 years. Mary's a primary school teacher and she has very little involvement on the farm. We find this is a really good balance as we can talk about other things than just farming. We have three children, we have a daughter aged six named Seren, a son named Seanan, he's three, and our two week old boy also, his name's Stefan. I grew up in Manchester and come from a non-farming background and my parents had always worked hard and instilled a good work ethic into myself and my brothers. And from a young age, young age, we would go camping to our paradise destination of North Wales. And this was our release from city life. This was a place where fields were green and concrete is limited to cattle collecting yards, where villages are lightly populated and schools have a few hundred pupils instead of 3,000, like the school I came from. This is a complete contrast as to what I was used to back in Manchester. I never actually really enjoyed secondary school and the smell of silage didn't make me very popular and wasn't particularly appealing to other city kids after a weekend in Wales. I left school when I was 15 with no qualifications and my parents finally agreed that I could go and stay on the farm in North Wales and this is where my passion for agriculture began. I, I worked on Porthoskadden Farm, and this was where, this was where I uh, used to go camping. And I worked there to earn my keep, and we were milking 35 cows whilst also lambing sheep. And once I turned 16, I bought a 50cc motorbike, and this was in order to find work on two other farms. And these entailed relief milking, fencing, stone walling, and sheep shearing. And this is when I really realised that I could make money doing something that I actually enjoyed. I first travelled to New Zealand when I was 17 and I worked for a shearing contractor and this was a lesson in discipline for me. I was pressing wool for 10 shearers whilst making sure lunch was ready for our gang of 17 and this was by far the hardest work I will ever do or have ever done. At this point when I arrived home, on my return to Wales, um, at this point I was quite lost in what I was going to do. as as like a future in farming or whether I was going to go and work in a shop or whatever it was. I didn't really know at that time what I, what I wanted to do. All I knew is I liked farming. And the thought of actually uh, owning my own stock or owning a farm was miles away. In fact, it was completely distant. It wasn't even think, something you'd think about because uh, all you heard was that you needed loads of money to start farming. Um, after returning, I met with Reese Williams and David Wynne Finch and they were in a joint venture milking 1,100 cows and I'd already done relief work previously for them. I remember driving down there on my 50cc scooter and asking Reese for a job. Reese offered, I, asked, I, I remember being quite forward with him and telling him I was going to try to go to college to learn, to, to learn about farm management or, um, I, well, or I didn't know what else I was going to do basically. Um, I asked him to ring me within a week and if it wasn't within the week, I was going to try and do something. But with little, edu with little education and no GCSEs, I didn't have, I didn't have a very good chance at um, going to college. I don't think they would have accepted me. So um, he, he rang me on the Sunday evening when I thought the time was up. And uh, he offered me a job on 18 grand a year and a house for me and Mary. I'd met Mary at 16. And uh, she, he offered us a ha with a house to live in, which was ideal for us. Uh, so I rang up my mum and in Manchester and I explained what he'd offered and she hit the roof and told me to take the job. My mum had been working for seven years, just to, just to give you an indication of where I'm coming from on this and sort of what I could see as a prospect as in agriculture and what my mum and dad could see for me. In the fact that mum had been working for seven years at that point and she had about eight staff under her and she was only earning about 12 grand a year and with a lot of pressure on her. Uh, for uh, selling TV products or whatever. But. So um, she thought it was a massive chance and I had to take it. So they, they offered me the job, but it was on the condition I'd, I returned to New Zealand to gain more experience. So I hopped back on a plane. 
and I went off to work in Invercargill down in Southland and I lived in with a family of eight. Their main objective and focus was growing and utilising as much high quality grass as possible whilst getting cows back in calf. All stock was outwintered and everything was efficient and simplified compared to what I was used to. I was now milking 400 cows in less time than it used to take me to milk 35 back in Wales. Machinery was kept to an absolute minimum and we were taking cows to feed and not feed, feed to cows. And by ensuring cows were going to fresh pasture on each break, there was no need for impala feeders or backing gates as they were so keen to get back to quality pasture. This style farming really appealed to me and it was so healthy for animals and it was healthy, healthy for people as it kept us fit. I returned to start my new position in 2008 as junior herdsman on Kevnamlock Dairy Farm. We were milking 1,100 crossbred cows and this was the exact same system I had just learned in New Zealand previous. And at this point I was introduced to discussion groups. Being a big part of these groups was a huge confidence builder and I felt like I was being finally in accepted into something that was very new to me and finding myself surrounded by positive people was something that I hadn't even experienced before. In 2009, I used part of my wages to buy my first 20 weaned heifer calves and I had found eight acres of poor quality grassland to rent. I improved this by rotationally grazing calves and outwintering being used as a tool for reseeding. Again, things I'd learned in New Zealand and on the job in, in Kevnam Loch Dairy. These calves were reared very cheaply and they brought me a £7,000 profit. The following spring, I thought I was completely rich. I'd never seen money like this. And... Um, I knew I was going to invest it wisely. I knew now at this point that I'd taken the first step and this was crucial to the fact of the dream of owning my, first, um, owning my own stock. I can remember when I used to work for the shearing contractor in Wales. I used to, I used to drive down the hill and he had like a tiny little paddock, square paddock, uh, triangular paddock of ground. And I always dreamt of owning two calves in that piece of ground. And, um, the thought of owning any more was ridiculous and I was always scared of going to actually ask him if I could, if I could rent it off him because I thought he'd, you know, he'd laugh. So. Um, by 2010, I'd bought another 47 weaned heifer calves and I'd secured another 15 acres from a guy in a Welsh learning night class that I was taking part in. The same process applied and realising there's that same, well, a very similar profit, I was quite confident to grow numbers more and at this point I was 21 and me and Mary were expecting our first child. So that was a shock. 2011, I purchased 82 heifers and rented another 50 acres of the council. I now bought a quad bike and used a small fertiliser spreader to apply furt on my weekends off work. I fenced these places as cheaply as possible by reusing posts and old reel wire and old pulsator pipes were cut and used as insulators and handles. And I mean, it was, it was really cheap, you know, it was like... I was untangling old balls of real wire and everything to, and then, yeah, taking time to do it, but it worked. Me and Mary never had any spare money whatsoever, and this was always the driver, and I constantly wanted the challenge of just making ends meet. The thought of complacency was an absolute no-go area, and by November 2011, I was fortunate enough to receive the Richard John Memorial Bursary. This bursary was from the, gra the Grasshoppers Grazing Group down in South Wales. And this allowed me to travel back to New Zealand and Australia for one month to learn about contract heifer rearing, share farming, cow leasing. I met with some of New Zealand and Australia's leading consultants and progressive dairy farmers, whom had all started from very small beginnings. There was one bloke in particular named Ben Alones, and he made it seem like it was really possible for me to actually do this in the fact that he showed me a graph. I, have, I haven't actually got the graph now. And the graph, the graph contained, it was 10 years, and he want, in 10 years he wanted to gain a million dollars worth of equity um, from $5,000 starting pot of money. And he actually, the graph actually showed me that he did it in seven. And at the, I, I was at a very similar point at this time in my life where I had like 80 heifers at this point, and I, I felt like they were, I was wasting my, their time really, you know? seen as they were milking thousands of cows and so forth. But they were taking the time out to, um, to show me where they thought I should go next. And going back, going back to Ben Alones, the first three or four years at the point where I was, 
I felt like I wasn't actually lifting off at all. Like I was just, it was very, very gradual. And this is something that he taught me, you know, the very first four years are, are really important stages of learning. And even starting from small beginnings, it's after that four years finishes, that's when you really take off. So his graph showed that it was very, very slow. And on the fourth year, he just shot up. And in three years, he got to his million dollar equity uh, that quickly. So it's what, what normally happens, as he was telling me, was you get, you get to your fourth year and some people just drop, drop off. They just jump off the wagon and say, I'm not going anywhere here. But it's actually them really crucial first four years that give you, give you the, the boost um, for, the, for the next six, if you like, if you understand where I'm coming from. Um, and what struck me was even though these people were extremely busy, be it milking thousands of cows or under pressure, they still took valuable time out to advise and guide me as to how I would, how would, how would grow and achieve my goal of owning 120 head in the next five years. These people are clearly driven by helping others succeed. And again, I felt absolutely accepted into this wonderful industry. Linnea Ryan and Leone Guiney simplified the true opportunities that are out there for new entrants, and this picture sums it up pretty well. Providing that we're strategic, hardworking, and willing, there is no reason that any of us cannot achieve our goals. And this is the same sort of journey and pathway as I am taking, and it shows that starting from the very beginning as an employee, that you can, be, you can start from there and work to the top. In 2012, I used the information gained from that trip to New Zealand and I leased out 50 in calf heifers for two years. By doing this, I retained their equity whilst adhering to my main objective of not becoming complacent. I realised that in order to continue growing, I would now need to borrow money and I had built a good reputation and relationship with my bank. So at this point, I hadn't borrowed anything. This was all from wages and calf sales and so forth. So we're rearing heifers from buying them and getting them up to in calf for about 4.35 a, a head and selling them on for 11 to 1,200. Um, so there's huge profit there. Each year I was informing the bank. I'd, I'd built a fantastic reputation and good relationship with my bank. And each year I would inform them as to what my plans were and I was overachieving year on year. This secured my first 30,000 pound loan which they weren't hesitant to give me at all. I used this to purchase more stock, and at this point I had to get better at managing time. As we had one child, we were expecting our second, and we had to work things around my full-time job. In 2013, I now had the opportunity to manage the 300 hectare farm where I'd, where I'd originally worked, and I took this in my stride. And at this point, we now owned 50 leased cows, 109 bulling heifers, and 110 weaned heifer calves. And this is when I really started thinking about share farming and realizing that soon I would have to either sell them all before calving them, lease them all out, which was very risky, and, or find an opportunity to milk them in my own right, which was truly what I wanted to do and what I'd learned about in New Zealand. There was certainly compromise here, as I would, I would go anywhere tomorrow to achieve my goals and, my, and the opportunity that I, that I desire. Whereas Mary, my fiance, wants to stay in North Wales where she's comfortable and that's where her family are. So the compromise was that we try and find something close to home. And th this is when David Wynne Finch, who I was working for, he offered me a 50-50 share farming opportunity a couple of miles away from where I worked then and where I originally camped as a child, which was really strange because I always dreamt of being a farmer as we're um, going camping on this farm, but now I can actually see the farm out my bedroom window where I camped as a child. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> yes, things are, things are just coming to me. In March 2014, oh, sorry. Um, we started the conversion on a 100 hectare greenfield site, which I oversaw, and this was invaluable and played a huge part in personal development dealing with people and managing them. 
By March 2014, we started milking 350 crossbred heifers through a 2448 Waikato parlour, and this runs as a one-man band and a very simple system. We employ one full-time member of staff and myself, and, we, and we, re, we use relief staff through calving. All young stock is contract reared, meaning we can focus on grass and cows, and this is what we are truly passionate about. In 2015, I was lucky, to be, lucky enough to be part of the Positive Farmers trip to New Zealand, and this was a fantastic opportunity to question some of the very best farmers New Zealand had on to offer, and Will Grayling being one of them. I made some fantastic lifelong new friends on this trip, and friends is something that I was quite short of, with not, with not having an education in Manchester, not going to college or university, and then moving from, to somewhere where I didn't know anybody. So this was, this, was a real, this was a real sort of personal development stage for me going on that trip to New Zealand in itself. The main, the main reason for the trip to New Zealand, I wanted clarity as to why we run the system we run and how we can make it even more robust and efficient and a system that can withstand the fiercest of volatility without compromising on our long-term business and personal goals. This is a summary, basically this is a summary of 09 to 13, I think. Yeah, 09 to 13, and it's just what I've just gone through talking. It just shows how, where, how we actually did it in numbers terms. Oh, we started with 20, sold them, bought 47, sold them 82, sold them 82, um, borrowed some money, bought 109, bought another 100, made another 109 heifer calves along the way. You should go back, Mary. Um, basically, it sums it up to a 386 head that we owned by 2013. So we sort of exceeded my 120 head goal, which I made in 2011 when we had 80. So by 2017, we have now lifted numbers to 400 cows and the business is a lean machine. We're generating cash and surplus stock and it allows me to think big. Our main focus is growing and utilizing as much grazed grass as possible and getting cows in calf with minimal, minimal intervention. And over this, over this period of nine years, I've got exactly the same objective as I had when I went into New Zealand in 09 to learn, 08 or 09 to learn about, about this sort of system with crossbred cows. Nothing's really changed. I'm still focused and driven, and that's, that's, that is the main objective. This is a graph of where we are now. So in 2011, when I went on the bursary to New Zealand, that's, that's, that's where we started at number one, and we had about 70, 80 head. And basically, this is, what we've, this is where we are in the last five years. Uh, over the last five years, up to the end of 16, that graph is, and we're up to 605 head, and this is cows plus young stock. Um, four, there's 400 milking cows, roughly 400 milking cows, and the rest of the young stock, and like I say, allowing me to think big, and um, generating, generating surplus stock in order for me to continue, continue growing, i.e. taking on another farm, so forth. Myself and Mary have never been good at goal setting or having a vision of what our lives are going to look like in the future. So last year I took part in the Wealth Creation course and this really got me thinking and completely changed my perspective of certain things. And I used to be completely driven and focused by money, be this right or wrong. I now know exactly what I'm going to achieve and why I want to achieve it. And the Wealth Creation has made me, Wealth Creation course has made me realise what I do and do not value and what is and isn't important. And like I say, this has changed my definition of wealth. This isn't just money, but family, friends, and relationships. My short-term goal is to replicate and locate a second unit, providing opportunities and to be involved in other people's progression, just sharing the cake and just generally giving back to society. My long-term goal is to replicate the short-term and allowing me, allowing more new entrants the same chances that I have had. I personally feel very positive towards the future for dairy farming. And my advice to new entrants would be to explore all possibilities before making the right choice. And I use choice as a key word. 
It doesn't matter where you come from or from whatever background you come from, you've always got a choice, regardless whether parents think you should carry on on the farm or you work in a shop, whatever it is. Everybody has that choice regardless. And people used to tell me, I always used to be going on to, um, when I worked for Reese Williams, that I'd, I'd cut my left hand off to have a farm and have the opportunity of um, taking on a, my parent, a pet, you know, if I was a farmer's son, whatever. And he used to say, you are the lucky one. You have got the choice, you know. I used to rubbish it. I used to go home to Mary and say, he's talking nonsense again, you know. <laughs> but there was never actually a truer word said. And in fact, nobody is tied to anything. We all have that choice. We can help make this choice by using tools. And these can be tr either traveling, networking, socializing with like-minded people, attending discussion groups, which was massively beneficial, using strategic planning or goal setting. I am often asked what it was that made me choose agriculture as a career path. And people always assume that it's because I've fallen in love with cows in the countryside. But the reality is, I needed to earn money to live and pay bills, and dairy farming has provided me with the tools to do so. We all want to better ourselves, and in order to succeed, we need a solid, we need a solid foundation of people and expertise in order to grow. So remember, when your opportunity clock goes off each morning, get out there and learn as much as possible. Good luck, and thank you for listening. <laughs>